Welcome to Motion Composer. Motion Composer is a new exciting tool to create animation for the web, either in Flash or in HTML5, and all at the same time. So let's walk you through some of the concepts inside Motion Composer, and we'll start with the user interface. When you create um, a new document in Motion Composer, this is what you this is what you get. The user interface um, has a big area reserved to the preview of your animation or the canvas. Then on the right, we have uh, the inspectors with tabs that let you inspect various aspects of your project, the slide, the document, effects, the preloader. Um, also an area for transition. This is where all the transition between properties of the object will be displayed. And at the bottom, you have the, the main uh, storyboard of your animation. Uh, that is uh, visualized using slides and state. And we'll come back to those concepts uh, in a moment. So let's start by creating uh, a first document. And we'll first of all adjust the size of my, of my document to, to be the size of a banner. And uh, what I will do in that, uh, in that document is simply show a logo for a product, add a little headline, and then make the logo disappear. In order to work with the images, you can simply drag images from your desktop into, um, into the scene, or you can uh, also uh, use a media browser to actually access uh, your standard locations for images. All the images of your document are stored in what is called the image library. So as you can see, uh, I have my, my image here appearing. You can, of course, delete it, refresh it if it's changed on the, uh, or replace it even with another image. And that's convenient when you work with uh, animations and you would just want to replace some objects of the animation. And you can also do crop uh, on, the, on the image. So click on the crop button, which simply bring the, the crop tool and lets you um, crop, even rotate the image. So what I will do here, um, I will, first of all, scale my image. And as you can see, as I move my object into the scene, um, the slide preview shows me the, um, uh, the preview of my, of my current state. If I want to um, hide an object, bring it out of the scene, simply move it outside of the uh, scene rectangle. So in my, in my case, what I want to do is to make that object appear from the top and bounce into the scene. To do that, I will simply create a second state for this uh, scene and move the object holding down the shift key so that it moves vertically and bring it back into the scene. So I now have two states, one where the object is visible and one where it is not. And Motion Composer will automatically do the animation between the two states uh, or the, between all successive states of my animation. The preview button has different options. You can preview the whole document. You can preview a slide. That's very convenient if you're working on, on a particular aspect of your animation. You can um, re uh, reduce the um, amount of the preview. But you can also preview a, a single state. And that's very convenient because while previewing a, a single state, it lets me actually change properties of the objects, of the scene, of the animation, while previewing it. So for example, here, um, if I go to the transition list, I only have one transition for that state, which is a transition on the y, on the y coordinate. The object is falling down from uh, a coordinate that's uh, negative to this uh, new coordinate. I can change that to any value here, if I want. I can also adjust the, um, the speed and the the way the animation works. For example, here I can use what is called an easing function to change the, um, the speed of the animation and from being linear to, for example, being a bounce animation. If you don't know what all these uh, uh, options are, simply use the pick button and it will let you uh, navigate through the various um, options and show you how, how they work. So here the object is coming in and bouncing down. That's the first step of my uh, animation. 
this may be just move it a bit okay now I will I will add a, a new state and simply change its timing from the default of one second to two seconds without doing any any other changes this will simply uh, hold on my animation in this state and and show the object at this position for two seconds then I will add some text and uh, to do that I create a new state and then add text so whenever I click on this uh, on on the creation of a of a text or image or rectangle um, in a state that's not the initial state there is this dialogue that pops in that says that I'm editing values in a state and maybe what I intended to do was to modify the values in every state and that's indeed what I want to do I want now to be able to move my text and make sure that it's moving it everywhere in all its previous states because otherwise it will create animations that I'm not intending to have so um, while this dialog is up I can change anything here without creating uh, animations that are, that are not intended. As you can see, the text has changed, the position is changing everywhere in all the states. When I'm done, um, I will hit the yes button, and the yes button simply means that I want this text to appear in this state and be hidden in the previous ones. So by simply clicking on yes, as you can see, the text is now hidden everywhere and visible here. Um, to see that in a different way, if I change to go to the inspector, and more particularly the component inspector, I can see that my object is visible in that state. If I move to a previous state, it is invisible. So Motion Composer will create an animation between the invisible state to the visible state. Let's just preview what um, my document looks like, while well, the state at the moment. There is an animation um, that animates the text in. And the anim this animation is the default animation. If I go to the Effects tab, I can see that there is um, what's called a split effect that happens on every character of the, of the text. And um, this split effect uh, actually is an effect on the opacity, which means that every character will come in uh, from, from left to right with an opacity that goes from 0 to 100%. But I could want to maybe make a more dramatic effect here. And this can be done simply by adding more properties uh, in uh, animations on more properties. So for example, suppose I want to um, uh, add a scale, make the text sort of zoom in. I will add twins for the scale on X and on Y and decide that the text moves from a scale of 5 to a scale of 1. Just preview, and as you can see, now I have an other animation on top of the opacity animation that makes the, the text come in. Um, it's not really easy to read, so uh, one way to actually solve that is to ensure that um, the animation on opacity starts a little bit later than the animation on scale. As you can see, by moving that cursor, I can simply say where uh, the animation starts. And here I say that roughly I want the animation opacity to start uh, at the middle of my um, animation time frame. And it's much more readable now. I can also, for every type of, uh, um, of animation, uh, decide on an easing function that can add um, some nice effects. So here is my uh, appearing animation. I can of course then also make the text disappear by adding a state, selecting the component, go to the component inspector and now make the text invisible. Um, then go to the effect pan panel and choose um, another type of animation for the um, disappearing of the text and instead of changing it uh, manually here I can also use this presets button and presets are available everywhere in every um, in every uh, tab tabulation here I, I have presets for documents I have presets for slides presets for pr 
preloaders and presets for effects. Presets are simply an, a, a list of, um, of behaviors that we provide or a list of uh, preferences or options that we provide and uh, that, um, that will be useful. So let's just preview the, the text, go back to the presets, and uh, as you can see, there are some effects that are already available for you. And if you create new effects that are really great, you can, you can save them as presets as well in the Users tab. Okay, let's, let's pick up this one. And now my animation is finished. So I can actually view the whole document now. Right, and uh, also um, preview it in HTML5. Simply by hitting the preview button, I'll get an HTML5 preview. Now, if I want to use my animation in, into my website, I now need to publish it. I can either publish it locally, or I can publish it on, on, a, on a web server, uh, using an FTP, using MobileMe, which support all those protocols to publish the animation. And if I do a local publication now, and I pick up um, a folder, As you can see from that folder, it will contain both an, the Swift file, that is the, the, the Flash version of the animation, as well as the uh, HTML version of the animation. And um, uh, the code that is, um, I open this. So here is the animation. The HTML code that I need to integrate in my, um, in my web page to make that animation appear is simply this code that is underneath here. So I can take that code, copy it into my web page, and if I'm in a browser that supports Flash, the Flash version will run. If I'm a browser that does not support Flash, like on, on iOS, for example, it's the HTML5 version that will be invoked and that will run. So you don't have to worry about um, whether your target platform supports Flash or not, or whether it supports HTML5. It will use whatever is the best for your platform. So this is a, a, a short introduction. Uh, in order to finish, I will simply uh, show one of the other aspects of um, Motion Composer, and it's the ability to add interactivity to documents. Um, we, we provide a number of templates, and one of them is called Slideshow Creation. I will just open it right now. And in this template, which I will uh, run in a second, we have created three slides. And these three slides are really uh, three slides of a slideshow. The difference between the previous animations that I showed you is that here, whenever I, I go in this, uh, in this first slide, the animation is actually stopped. And in order to proceed to uh, the other slides, I'm actually using some interactivity in the form of buttons. So you can, using Motion Composer, create actions on objects. And this is what has been done here. Um, first of all, whenever the first slide is started, when the animation starts, um, the slide has a property, which is the end action. And the end action in that case is to pose. So I will guarantee that after starting the animation, we'll show the first image and then pose. And in order to continue the animation, I use actions on buttons. So for example, the right button has an action, a click action called next slide. And as you can see, there are a number of options that are available for uh, wiring actions to buttons. You can go to different slides, different states. You can play pose, open a URL. This is a standard action. Or execute some custom JavaScripts that you want to, do, to execute. Similarly, the uh, left button has a previous slide uh, action. And this has been repeated, actually copy-pasted between the various slides so that the buttons behave the same. So very easily here, I can move um, and create custom slideshows um, very quickly by copy-pasting slides and ch changing the images. 
I could also, for example, make some text come in and come out um, very simply by animating uh, a text box into my, into my slideshow. So this is it. Thank you very much for uh, watching this uh, short video. We'll, uh, we'll hope you'll enjoy and you'll do um, amazing creations using Motion Composer.